Hey guys, today we're going to be uh, working on an extension cord. So I have this extension cord here and when I plug a uh, device in like my leaf blower, it constantly has like a loose connection in it. It works, it don't work. It works, it doesn't work. Now you're probably saying, what does this have to do with automotive? Well, sometimes you uh, in the automotive field you have extension cords that we need and sometimes they fail. Well, to replace an extension cord Sometimes it costs 50 bucks. I'm going to show you how to fix it for $1.50. So you go to your local hardware store, like we have the one on uh, Washington Road, where I picked this up for two bucks. So I could either throw away my cord and uh, have to buy another $50 extension cord, or I can fix it for two bucks. So I'm going to show you how to repair it. Now, this happened to me last year. You guys ever hear of Karma? Well, last year I taught my daughter how to use a um, trimmer for uh, the bushes. And as she was trimming the bushes, she wound up cutting through an extension cord. So, of course, what do dads do? They yell at their child. So I yelled at her, called her a bunch of names, and showed her how to do it without trying to cut through the cord. And she went inside, and then uh, I went and I started trimming the, the bushes the following week after I made the extension cord repair. And what do I do? I cut through the extension cord and I had to go apologize to my daughter because I did the same exact thing. So uh, today though, we just got a loose connection in here and this is an old extension cord. It's a two prong. I want to change it to a three prong. Probably not going to have the ground wire in it. It's still probably not going to have a ground in it, but we still have a big and a small and a big and a small. The problem is, is a lot of my uh, equipment is a three prong and doesn't want to fit in here properly. It's kind of difficult. So let's start taking apart this end. First thing is make sure it's not plugged in. That'd be really dumb to work on something plugged in because uh, electricity in your house is a lot more dangerous than uh, the car electrical I've been teaching you. Um, house electrical is usually like uh, 110 volts, 20 amps. Half an amp can kill you, all right? So, uh, got to be very careful. Make sure our, our stuff isn't plugged in. All right, so let's start taking this apart. Well, first thing I noticed is this might have already been repaired once. It's got an end on it that has a screw. Sometimes they, they, they don't come apart. So we'll start by taking the screw out and see what happens. All right, my screw's out. And sometimes that allows this front piece to come out. So let me see if I can get this thing apart. Yeah, it start, looks like it wants to push forward a little bit. Might need a little help from a screwdriver. Alright. And... Oh yeah, I got a got a frayed wire. That was a, a problem. That could have caused an electrical fire. So the wire broke off, and I guess when it was in there, it was touching. It was not touching. Could have even jumped over. If there was a ground wire, it could have popped the circuit breaker. Like I said, I want I want to replace this whole thing. Now I could just unscrew this, strip this wire, and put it on. And I'd be good to go. It'd be repaired. But like I said, I want to wind up putting this on. So one thing I'm going to make note of is the colored wires. So we have a white wire. And that is going to our big slot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jot it down on a piece of paper. So I'm going to draw a big slot and a small slot. Big slot is white. Small slot black. <laughs> Boy, black. There, there's my dyslexia for you. All right, so um, black wire. That's our hot wire. That's our uh, voltage power. Now, um, white wire, it's not ground, uh, what do they call it? They call it uh, 
neutral, something like that. I'll have to look it up. All right, but uh, black wire's power. So I'm gonna wind up cutting this and splicing this and uh, we'll go from there. So let me take my wire cutter. Cut this off. Should have prepared, I should have went in the garage and got a razor blade because I gotta strip this material back. Yep, our extension cord is only a two wire extension cord. A lot of times they're three wires, but the better extension cords are three wires. You guys are probably watching TV behind me, huh? Alright, so I peel that back and I expose my white and my black wire. And cut that little bit of uh, orange uh, insulator off. Now I'm going to use my wire stripper. Strip some wire off. So this has got braided wire in it. A lot of times you'll see solid core. I like the solid core stuff better. On cars I like the braided stuff. Whenever I use braid I give it a twist to make it tighter, make it more solid. Alright, let me move this stuff to the side. And we'll take apart my new uh, connector. So it's got three screws in the front. It's got all my attachment points. So the big one, I'm going to wind up putting the white wire to my big one. Black wire is going to go here for my small, and then if it had a ground, it would have gone to my green one, which would have been that third plug. So we got big, small, and ground. So white, black, and usually there's just a copper wire in there that would be your ground. Now I'm going to strip this wire a little more, give, get a little more access to it. Strip, I twist. That's my big. I'm going to undo this screw a little bit. And I'm going to get this to go in that it turns. I want it to turn that when I turn my screw tighter, it's going to fold this piece of metal over. If I put it in the other way, and I had it bent, it would actually, as I turned it, it would open it up and loosen it. But since I'm putting it in this way, as I tighten it, it should make my loop even tighter. I gotta stop the video, phone's calling. All right, so I'm back. Just had a phone call with one of my students that graduated. Good stuff, gonna miss him. Good wrestler. All right, so once again, I got to put my white one on this big one. So I'm going to curl my wire like a hook and try to get it in place here. Sometimes a little difficult. So I got it hooked around there, and it kind of fits in a little slot right there. So now I'm going to tighten it up. Alright, so I got it nice and tight. Now go to the other side. Loosen it up. I'm going to strip that a little more so I have a little bit more wire exposed.
I'm going to try to get this in a way that it will curl around. Kind of got it in the wrong spot though. When I tighten it up, it's going to tighten it wrong. Just got to make sure I get it under that screw. how it's going in like that I like it going the other way the other problems I don't think these screws allow you to take them all the way out let me shove this in here So I got that under the nut, let me tighten it. Now I might have made a mistake now that I'm looking at it. I probably should have put the sleeve on there first. So now I actually have to go backwards and I got to put the sleeve on first. So I got to undo everything I did because I wasn't paying attention properly. All right, let me take it all apart again. All right, so what I made the mistake on was this piece has to go in first. I tighten those other pieces on now I'm not going to videotape me putting these things back on because you've seen it already so I'm just going to do that off camera but yeah I hate going backwards you, you start going forward and two steps back that's what's the saying um, one step forward two steps back something like that that's what I kind of just did now um, yeah you guys probably ran into this with our small engine project those of you guys that are doing this, sometimes you got to start taking things apart because you forgot a piece. But, uh, yeah, I'll get it back together. So what I just noticed on this is, like, this is my old one that you had to do the curl technique. The new one actually has a little piece of metal that will slide that if I put the wire under it, it will pinch it shut. I don't know if you can see it moving in there, but if I put this underneath this flap of metal, then when I tighten that piece of metal pinches the copper. Then we have a nice connection. I don't know why my screwdriver ain't working properly. It's a good screwdriver. It's a snap-on screwdriver and it's not grabbing it. So the wrong size. Use the flathead and tighten it. So I tighten both sides. Take the cap. Try to get it all together. And then I tighten the front screws. Now it's time to test something. Let me go find a hair dryer or something. Okay, so I couldn't find my wire, my wife's hair dryer, so I got my clippers. Obviously, you can see I got a haircut. Shaved my head the other day, so I use my clippers. I got it plugged in. Let's see if it works. Oh, it works good. I move it around, no more on and off. And now I got my extension cord all fixed. Alright guys, so if you ever have a cut extension cord, you can fix it for about two bucks.